is up guys welcome to the think computers weekly tech podcast this is episode 353 and our podcast is brought to you by amazon if you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash amazon and happen to purchase something that gives us a little kickback and keeps the podcast on going with me of course is ryan what's going on Nothing. ryan was a little flustered <laughs> he was he was a little flustered when we when we started as, as per usual i came downstairs with not enough time to do everything that i want to do Right. What all do you have I, to like, do? Like, well, I just had, had had some social media stuff I was trying to get done, and yeah. and and get the podcast like my side of things finalized. Yeah, yeah so. he, his headset I, I, wasn't working correctly. You know, no, it's, that it's is not normal, true. Normal... Oh, that is true. I had the wrong audio because <laughs> I've been listening to my speakers earlier. Yeah. Well, well, I try like Wednesday nights. I try to like make sure I'm you know having dinner with the family. I'm up there yeah. as long as I can before I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be gone for the next hour hour and a half yeah. then i go up between the podcast and gaming tuck the kids in and then i'm back down here so i try and be around and every now and then it just i don't yeah, you know yeah we're here no. though we're here we're yeah, live yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully you calm down so we can have i'm nice... calm i'm calm i don't think i've ever seen ryan really there was a couple times gaming where he was really upset and he just like quit he's like i'm done and he just like got off discord and was but I never—I don't think I've ever seen it like on the podcast, like on your camera, or like in real huh. life. I don't think I've ever seen you really upset. I'm trying to yeah. think. I don't think. What don't does it think take? So. What does know. it take to get you real upset? I don't know. I don't know. I don't there's some, talk there's, about some, it. there's there's something. We're gonna figure. <laughs> we're gonna figure it out and play a, <laughs> play a prank on you. I feel. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, but yeah, well, welcome funny. to the podcast, everybody. Of course, we're here every, uh, mostly every Wednesday for the most yeah. part. Uh, to talk about tech, talk about uh, some of the reviews we did in the week, and just, you know, hang out with you guys. Um, we do have our show notes page. So if there is uh, something that you, you know, want to check out more or click through as we go through it or as we talk about it, um, it is linked in the description of this video or linked in uh, the podcast notes um, on whatever podcast uh uh application platform? yeah platform or application that you use it will be in there so you can uh follow along if you're listening to this later so we will have that for you so we'll start out with reviews and uh i took a look at a router which is something what? i I don't normally do which is yeah. it was kind of fun because um i'm you're i would say you're the more you're the network guy yeah i would yeah i you know i've looked at i think probably our most recent wi-fi and router type devices over the last couple of years and I, I i did that in my previous career i guess uh did network type stuff so yeah but you you took a, a look at one yeah so this it's is large actually... uh, i'm always surprised at how large these routers just they just keep growing yeah so this is a big router but it was so a couple years ago i got that asus rog router and i've been using mm -hmm. that for the past couple of years. And that thing is awesome. Uh, especially now that I have gigabit ethernet, like I can max out my connection. You know what I mean? Um, gotcha. And obviously all the gaming routers that we've seen beyond the Asus ROG one, like they're from like Netgear. They're not, these, these aren't gaming companies. Asus, right. you would consider a gaming company, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just like, this router that we took a look at is from MSI, and MSI is more known as a gaming company. They're not known as a networking or router company. Um, so this is their first entry into the networking space. Uh, it's their Radix AXE 6600. Uh, it's a tri-band router, so you're going to get 2.5 on the Wi-Fi side of things. You're going to get 2.5 gigahertz 
or 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz. The cool thing with a 6 gigahertz band is that it's less busy. You're going to have less devices. A lot of devices, you know, a lot of your, um, even like a laptop that's a year old, won't have Wi-Fi 6E, right? It's right. only going to be able to support the 5 gigahertz band. It's not going to be able to support the 6 gigahertz band. So um, a lot less traffic you would say and that that's what makes this router really great um and again you can get wi-fi 6e routers out there but this one um has a lot of really cool features and we'll talk about the way it looks first because this thing looks like a lamborghini almost <laughs> i mean if you look at <laughs> it, it does yeah it is and i think that's i think that's why asus was so successful with their routers as well they were like the first company or one of the first companies to put rgb lighting on their router and we all say oh, oh rgb it doesn't mean it but it makes your router look cool and if you are a setup person and you have your router sitting in your office or in your game room or wherever it is it's gonna look cool as hell sitting there yep. uh, so this thing looks awesome it looks like a lamborghini um you can see it there and of course we have all of those antennas uh six antennas yeah six little antennas one thing I really liked about uh, the MSI design, and I don't know if you've uh, unpackaged or dealt with any routers that have all of these crazy antennas, is that the antennas were pre-wired or pre-installed. So like the Asus router that I got, I had to, you know, wind those. Post them on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I looked at a, um, what is it? Uh, no, no. I can't think of the brand. A Trendnet or a Trendnet? One, okay. of, one of the routers, re, you know, a couple of years ago. And it they like popped on they clicked on they didn't use the twist on which was nice oh, so it wasn't nice. as bad but yeah yeah the ones that twist on yeah you'd be there for a while with this many antennas yeah so that was one thing that i really appreciated um it does have a little msi logo which actually is a button which we'll talk about uh you can turn the leds completely off which will you know there's a button there uh wi-fi button and then a wps button and then you have indication leds kind of behind this uh, little section here um, that's what it looks like from the front. Again, just the sleek overall looking uh, router. On the back, you have four one gig LAN ports, and then you have a 2.5 gig uh, port that you can either use as WAN or LAN, which is nice. Um, so if you, again, you know, you have a one gig coming in and a 2.5 gig go into your system or however you want to do it, you can do that. There is a USB. 3.0 ports and then you do get a power button which i really do like to see sometimes you just want to turn it off like if you want a power <laughs> cycle you just want to be able to just hit the button and then turn it back on um so you have all of that there um and then well, before we get into the setup let's check out the uh the lighting oh, that's more on the setup let's go into the lighting so the lighting on this thing of course all of those antennas light up with RGB lighting, which is pretty cool. That's cool. I like that. Um, now, when I reviewed this, uh, MSI Mystic Light did not work. I believe, like the day we launched the review, M the MSI router app came out, which hmm. would allow you to change this lighting to your own specifications. But the actual lighting is based on which mode you're in. So this router has smart modes, like a gaming mode that's going to optimize gaming traffic, a streaming mode that's going to optimize your streaming traffic. There's a work from home mode. And then there is an AI mode that is going to detect what, you know, what you're doing on your network and sort of optimize for what's going on, which is really cool as well, especially for people like me, Again, Ryan's the more technical person. I'm the, I like to plug it in. I might want to change a few settings, but I really just want it. I want it to, to, to help me out. You know what I mean? I'm right, not right. going to go down into a ton of menus to change a ton of things. I kind of just want it to work. I want it to look nice and I want it to work. Um, so that AI mode is really nice, but you can see the different lighting. Um, so red, I believe is for the um, gaming mode. And then you have uh, white and blue. And then there is a green as well for the different modes. Um, so it looks, like I said, this router looks completely awesome. Now, setup on this thing is so easy. Um, you're you're given, you know, you just log right into it. And you can do this on your phone. You can do it on, um, on your, you know, on your computer. It's super easy. You create an account. 
you go in there and you basically, it's just, it's super, super easy. I think that's the biggest thing. You just go through the settings and you're in there and that's it. And then the interface itself is, I mean, you look at this. I mean, this is looks just, cool. I like it. Yeah, it's super easy. There's the main modes up here again, AI auto, gaming, streaming, work from home. Um, and then you can set up a traditional QoS if you wanted to, if you, you know, wanted to go down into things. You can see, uh, you know, activity as far as, you know, what's going on. There's a traffic analyzer you can see there. You can see your connection status. And then, of course, you can see what's connected, like your wired clients, things like that. Um, it's super, super easy. And we have all the screenshots of all the different things you can set up and how easy it is to, to set things up and go through the different settings. It's extremely easy. Um, and this is, like I said, this is a router there that's going to, comp if you have gigabit ethernet, you're going to max it out, um, which is really nice. Um, you know, I, it's so nice having gigabit ethernet and having a product that I can max out my connection. Right. Um, and I tested it directly against the, uh, Asus ROG router that I had, um, Obviously, it's going to perform right around the same, except for on the six gigahertz band where we do get a lot faster speeds. Although we are limited to kind of our test setup because we don't have a way of testing with that 2.5 gig uh, connection per se. Uh, we don't have a client on the other. We, we don't have two 2.5 gig uh, clients to kind of test that out. Um, but if you look at our tests, it does really, really well. Um, and then we did some lengthy tests, uh, just with the five gigahertz, 2.4 and five gigahertz band. Um, but you can check those out as well. Performs really, really great, super easy to use. And I think the thing that's great about this router is that for somebody, again, more of a gamer, not so much of a technical person wants a cool looking router that's going to have the modes for gaming. That's going to have everything kind of set up for you. It's going to look nice. Um, I think this is an awesome, uh, it's, it's an awesome router. Um, it's like I said, it's, it competes really well against the Asus products. Um, yeah. And for their first kind of foray into the networking space, especially the, I guess you would call it gaming specific networking space. I think it's mm -hmm. a really good entry. Um, and right now it's not all that affordable. So they actually have a, uh, the router is three hundred forty nine dollars, wow. and they have a one hundred dollar off promotion right now through Newegg uh, with the code Lucky Hundred. Uh, that is till March fifteenth if you want to pick it up. So that'll bring the router to two forty nine. There's not many routers, uh, Wi Fi six E routers that are going to that are going to be around that price. You can find a Wi Fi six router, but not a Wi Fi six E router. Uh, around that price. So really cool stuff. Um, yeah, I really, really like that. I think if there was anything like under the cons, I wrote uh, only four Ethernet ports, you know, it would have been nice to see because that last port is either WAN or LAN. You know, you have to make use of it somehow. Um, so it would have been nice to see maybe five, you know, just give us one extra one. Um, and then my other cons were about Mystic Light and some of that, but I believe they the day the router came out, they, they released the, uh, software, yeah. the, yeah. So, you know, the MSI dragon software it's built yep. into that. Even if you don't have like an MSI dragon, um, or MSI motherboard, that's what that's typically for. You can download that software and then in there, it will detect the router on your network and then you should be able to get all that working. So I really like it. I think it's cool. Um, it's a great, great router. If you're again, have gigabit ethernet, you want to kind of max that out. Um, no connectivity issues at all, uh, even through one, two, three, three things of concrete, <laughs> you know, in my like all in, your walls. And yeah, all my walls. No, no uh, coverage issues there either. So uh, some really great stuff. So check, uh, check Sweet. that out. And then Ryan took a look at a uh, another one of his uh, encrypted USB drives, which I think is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So you had that. You had this uh, Kingston Iron Key Vault Privacy 50. Yeah, so I took a look again at another one of these uh, encrypted, hardware encrypted uh, USB flash drives. Now, the, the thing about this one that, you know, the, the 
one I looked at uh, two or three weeks ago had the keypad on it and you could kind of unlock the drive um, with it being outside of a system and then you plug it in, doesn't require any software. This one has kind of a, that software element to it where you put it into the computer, your machine recognizes it and you can launch an executable to unlock that drive you know, with a password. Um, again, it kind of has a similar setup and I'll go through the setup here in a minute, but it, um, has both a, a user and an admin password. So you kind of have multiple levels of um, configuration and access to the drive. Um, but our version is the uh, the VP50C and that C stands for type C. So this drive actually has a USB type C connection as opposed to a type A, um, which I think is pretty cool. Although it does come with a drawback that I'll talk about here in a minute. It's available in multiple sizes as well, you know, eight to 256 gigs. So really pretty good uh, um, size capacities for your needs, right? If you only need to, to move small files, but you still need them to be encrypted, that eight gig drive might work for you. But if you need to move larger amounts of things, 256 is there for you as well. Um, hardware encrypted. So it's got FIPS 197 certification. It's using the same AES 256 encryption as well uh, that the previous drive that I looked at had. Um, but yeah, let's just go over to the overview. So again, you know, just your standard USB drive. I've got it right here. You know, it's about the size of a pack of gum, right? Just a single like five stick of Wrigley's or something. Uh, but it's that type C connection. Let's, uh, that's not going to do it. That's right. The picture's better anyways. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's got the, just a pretty standard drive. Like there's not much to talk about it, right? It's a metal casing. It's got a cap on it. One thing I will note though, is that the cap just doesn't stay on it very well. Uh, I'm a person that likes to put a flash drive in my pocket. And multiple times I found the cap off in my pocket, which mm -hmm. I don't really like. Um, times that I don't have it in my pocket, I was putting it in my like laptop briefcase bag that I bring to work every day. And I put it in the pocket with like my keys and uh, just like some little items that I have with me all the time. And a lot of times I would find the cap off separated from the drive in there. So I didn't really like that. And the reason that bugs me the most is because if I'm going to go back to this drive again, like, you know how small a USB type C connector is and it's just sticks out from this drive so much that I was always afraid that it was going to like get damaged or snap off. And that's yeah. also a little bit of a concern to me when you have it in a device, you know, you've got it plugged into your laptop and you bump it. I would feel much better about a type a connection getting bumped than a type C. And that's just something inherent with type C connectors, right? They're just smaller, a little more fragile, um, so just something to keep in mind there. Um, I just, I wish they would find a better way to keep the lid on this drive. And the weird thing is, is I have another iron key drive that I use for work. Um, that's the exact same design as this other than being a type a and the lid stays on it so much better. Interesting. Um, so, I, so I don't know, you know, I don't know if they made little adjustments to it being the type C connection, but you can see the little indent here. Yeah. Where it's um, supposed to the, clip that kind, kind of, of clips in and it just never holds very well uh, which which kind of stung so um like i said set up again like the other drive kingston has an amazing video for setting this up so um you'll want to check that out because they don't really include an instruction manual with this uh drive nor do they have one on their website i searched all over for it and couldn't find it so their video is the best way and the thankfully the videos are really good um but i've also kind of talked through um Plug I remember and going through the setup. Not yeah. not to not to interrupt you, but I remember re reviewing some products like five or six years ago, and yeah. like you know, this is like before YouTube and like social media content was like really big, and like they had like an instruction manual of how to like install this thing, mm -hmm. and it was one of the worst things I've ever Terrible. watched. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, it's good. Uh, so yeah, it's really just a real basic step by step, right? What language do you want to set up in? user agreement, set up your passwords. Now this supports both like a standard complex password and a passphrase. So complex just requires it to be six to 16 characters long, but it has to include like uh, uppercase, lowercase, a symbol and a special character, right? Kind of those standard password requirements that you're gonna find whenever yeah. you're setting up a password for a service or something. But it also uh, offers the option of a passphrase. So it has a 10 character minimum. So it doesn't necessarily have to meet the uppercase, lowercase requirements, 
but it has a 10 to 64 character limit. So you can put like a whole sentence in there practically, yeah. right? Uh, which is really awesome for um, just helping you remember maybe a password as opposed to just a bunch of random symbols and characters that you may end up just writing down anyways. Um, so that's there. You should never um, write your password down. Oh, there's my password that I set up uh, yeah. On, yeah. on mine, right? Like, so the password, passphrase, I should say, that I set up for this um, is Kingston Iron Vault Vault Privacy 50 exclamation point, right? Like, that's my password for this drive. If, if you get it and you steal it, that's the password. So there it is. <laughs> uh, and, and then, you know, you can set up like a user password as well, right? On that one, I said yeah. computers review. Um, so it's just a different way to, to manage that device. You can also put some contact information in there. So if you were to lose this or, you know, it gets stolen, whatever the case may be, someone finds it, they can open up the application that runs on the drive and there's a contact tab and it'll have that contact information, right? Oh. So they can see that info, but they can't see your encrypted drive files that are on the drive, which is really nice. Um, and then once you've unlocked it with software, it'll actually show up for you in Windows Explorer. Nice. Um, and then just some real basic admin settings to, to adjust a couple things and kind of reset the drive, things like that. Um, and then performance, again, the previous drive, the keypad 200 that we looked at outperformed its advertised specifications, but this drive really outperformed uh, the specs. I was uh, kind of surprised. I don't know if they're like sandbagging or what they're doing, but this drive was so much faster than they advertised because they advertise between 230 and 250 megs a second read and 150 and 180 megs a second write. Maybe and you I'm have like, like the new those. one. Maybe you have the new uh, one. That maybe? happens a lot because I'm reviewing another drive that's like they had an older version yeah. and now the newer version, they haven't like it's updated bad. their product pages. So. Maybe, you know, that, that could be, that could be possible. And I, ju- I and then just that might have out the packaging for it. Yeah. And um, that might've got lost in the mix as far as like, because Kingston did buy Iron Key not all that long ago. So like right. that, you know, they got to change a product page. Like, you know, that stuff can yeah. kind of get mixed up. But the, yep. that performance, like, I mean, that's almost as fast as an like a SATA based SSD. I mean, that's fast. Yeah, no, it was great. I was really impressed by it. Um, again, the random reads and writes aren't aren't amazing, but the sequential reads and writes are, you know, we're, we're way above uh, advertised specs, uh, which is nice. So yeah. Um, yeah, again, final thoughts. I like the drive. My only concerns really are that that cap comes off too easily, which kind of has me scared for its safety, right, on that USB yeah. Type-C connection. But they do, they do offer an A version as well. Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yep, they they offer it in a, a newer, um, uh, or type in both a. versions, right? Yeah, so Type A and Type C. So, um, you know, if you're going to use it on, like, a newer device that doesn't have Type A, consider the Type C. Um, they've got you covered there. So, um, yeah. And the one I looked at, uh, is the 64 gig, um, and it's going for right around $125 right now. So yeah. nice. Very cool stuff. Ryan's the new encryption Absolutely. guy. That's what's <laughs> sure. Yeah. He's, he's the encryption guy. That's pretty cool. Um, I took a look at a case as well. Um, and this is one, uh, that I was pretty excited about, um, this is the Be Quiet Pure Base 500 FX, and basically, it's their 500 DX that we had already reviewed, but they've added four of their new Lightwings fans. So, last year we reviewed the new Lightwings fans, and these were the first ARGB fans from Be Quiet, and you know, obviously, like the name Be Quiet, they're actually RGB fans that are made to be high quality case fans. They're not just fans that look pretty. Um, and a lot of people will appreciate that because they are actually quiet, um, which is a good thing, um, especially when you want to load up your system. So same case that we had already reviewed. Um, this one, the DX that we reviewed is white. This case is black and it appears that it's only going to be in black. So you're only going to be able to get this version of the case in black, at least for right now. Um, this is a pretty solid mid tower. Like I said, we had already reviewed it. Um, high airflow design in the front. So you have mesh all in the front, kind of split into these two sections with this strip that runs down the middle. That is an ARGB strip, which we will show you. Um, and then instead of having like the normal, um, what are the be quiet fans called the wing wings? Um, yeah. Light wing or no, I mean, um, these are the new ones. These are the light wings, but what were the. 
anyways, instead of having the normal non ARG, yeah, the normal ARGB fans or the normal fans, you're getting three 120 millimeter ARGB fans right here in the front. Um, all pre installed, all pre wired, which again, we will show you. Um, and then on in the rear here, you're going to get a 140, which is pretty interesting. I don't think we've reviewed a case that comes with like, like ARGB fans that the, you know, you, you'd get like all 120s, but in the back, they give yeah, you a 140, yeah. which is actually pretty nice. Um, so that is, that is definitely nice. So four included ARGB fans, and then all of these fans are actually pre-wired on the back. So on the back you'll find the removable SSD tray. They've actually, in one of the spots, they put this PCB, and this is a fan and ARGB hub. So all of the fans, all of their power connections go into this, all of the fans, ARGB connections go into this, as well as the ARGB connection for that front, that strip on the front of the case. So everything's pre-wired. So I, I always say it's good to go out of the box, like this case, is good to go out of the box. All you have to connect to your motherboard is the PWM connection for the fans. And then there's a SATA connection that it's for the, um, for like the, to power everything. It's just a SATA right. connection. So it's pretty much good to go out of the box, which I really like, you know, and we've talked about this multiple times, how big of a pain in the ass it is to run all of your, yeah. your, you know, your PWM connections and then run all of the, ARGB connections, it's all done here. And what's really nice is that this PCB supports up to six devices. So you can see over here, we have two empty PWM connections and two empty ARGB connections. So you can connect whatever else you may like, whether they're fans, whether it's an RGB strip, you can connect them to this, you know, nice and easily, which is really, really I, nice. One thing I wish they'd maybe do with that is put a cover on it, right? Like if, you know, yeah. like the... Corsair um, Commander Pros, mm -hmm. you know, they're just like a plastic box that goes in there. And like NZXT used to have their Hue boxes mm -hmm. and they're just like more uh, more finished. Right. I mean, I know you're not seeing this, but I, I don't know. And I don't no, know how much I, I, I definitely... that would cost, but I, I would prefer a more polished, clean look to, to these. Not that I... I don't appreciate them because I do. I like that it's included. Just a yeah. nitpick of mine. No, I, I definitely agree with that. And what's... You know, because this is on the SSD tray, you're losing the ability yeah, to install an SSD there. Um, so it brings that down to one. Now on the back, you still get um, the ability to install. Well, these actually are on the front, but you get one here, one here, and then you get two. You can install two more drives down here um, and then the one drive here. So that's two, four, five. So five instead of six. Um, Plus whatever you got on your motherboard, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know. Um, but overall, like I said, the case is the same as the case. They didn't make any changes to this case beyond that, um, which is kind of a little bit disappointing because there were some things I didn't like about the original case um, that they could have fixed. And some things that just seem a little bit dated, um, especially like these. Uh, it's nice that you get the Velcro, but you now you see the ones that kind of really hold things down. They're a lot better like they're just more fine tuned. You don't get any of that back here. And again, the case is identical to the same case we reviewed in 2021. Um, so that that is a little bit uh, disappointing. Um, no problems with installation though. This is actually, we use this case for our CPU cooler reviews. That's how much we like it and how we like its high airflow design. Like it's a good case. So installation, no issues at all. Everything goes in very easily. Um, didn't have any issues. And you know, this case is gonna support long graphics cards, uh, ATX power supplies, everything like that. You're not really gonna have any big issues uh, when it comes to installation. Um, and then the lighting. So this is what the front of the case will look like with those ARGB fans. And then again, that strip in the center is gonna light up with RGB lighting. Now, because everything's pre-wired, there's a button on the top of the case that allows you to cycle through colors and modes. So there's a couple different modes and a couple, and then you, I think there's like seven different colors. Um, we have some, you know, the different modes. It's pretty cool that you can do that. And of course that everything's all in sync, right? Uh, it's cause it is all pre-wired for you. So nothing's messed up. It all kind of goes together. You can see the, the back fan lit up there as well. But if you don't want to use that button, you want a little bit more, you know, some more settings, you can pass through the ARGB to your motherboard and then control it with your motherboard's ARGB software as well. But I think the case looks good. Like I said, I mean, 
with the different settings and how everything in the case is going to be in sync. It's going to look really, really cool, um, which I did like. And then as far as our testing goes, um, especially like noise levels, as far as like idling, I mean, this thing is quiet um, because those fans are extremely, extremely quiet. Uh, when it came to load, um, side of the case was actually really, really loud. I don't I'm not sure why. Uh, but the front of the case was not not as loud. I don't know if that was just our CPU cooler, um, but the the front of the case just pretty scored pretty well in our noise level test, and our temperature tests are pretty good here as well. So overall, I like this case. Um, the original case, I believe, is was ninety nine. This case is one fifty. Um, so if you think about it, uh, the light wings. Kit, a kit of three fans is, I believe, $79. Oh, uh, yeah. Makes sense to get the case. <laughs> yeah. The so, yeah. So, you know, and then you get four fans. You're not getting three. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just kind of makes sense if you're kind of, we're doing a build and you wanted a case with all the fans. And I, I really like that it's just all pre wired, right? Uh, we see a lot of these cases that come with this stuff and you got to connect it all yourself and it's some of it's daisy chained together and it's you know a little wonky this stuff's all pre-wired for you super simple and again the case is a good case high airflow easy to install you know tempered glass side panel i do have to say i really wish they would have changed the tempered glass side panel in, in the two years since we reviewed the original as well having those big thumb screws on the yeah. tempered class side panel seems a little dated, especially considering, you know, we're seeing a lot of cases that have these nice door designs or something like that. So, um, but for, for kind of molding their two products together, I think it's a good overall, you know, I like the imp implementation of it together. So go ahead and nice. uh, check that review out as well. And we'll move on to case mod Friday. And, you know, I always talk about my Lee and Lee 011 dynamic <laughs> mini build that's sitting over here. Um, and I, now I'm just like, oh, I want this one now. Uh, oh. So this is this is called ODE and it's from Fen High End Custom Systems. And this is just so sleek. And yeah, chrome uh, hard tubing here with the built in. Uh, uh, what do you what do you call this? Distro plate. Here? Yeah, distro plates. Um, yeah, just awesome lighting. Um, same fans. I mean, I'm, this case almost looks yeah, identical. To mine with. I I don't have the rear fan, so I have three here and three here, and then I where the distro plate is is where I have my um. Your AIO. Right? Yeah, or no, I have the AIO up top. That's I have right. two. I have two more fans right here. But I mean, this thing just looks nice. Um, ROG kind of theme build, but I, I love this paint job. So you wouldn't, so if you look at it from here, like, oh, it's an all black case, mm -hmm. but they've done this amazing kind of cherry red with the chrome accent up top. And you look at that. Yeah. I like those accent plates. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So that is just super, super cool. I love how they, they put in that previous image, they put the like another image of the build on the screen, right? Just yeah. like I love their presentation of this build. Yeah, it's just such like you know, Chrome always looks great. Um, you know, there's that back paneling and everything there. And you can kind of see you can see the pump right there. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a very, very nice and clean. There's the there's that front of looking through the front just yeah right. super sleek super super sleek there yeah a lot of chrome yeah. a lot of yeah. a lot of like room for fingerprints right when you're done with oh. this build you're like cleaning it up like making sure you're not yeah. putting any more fingerprints in there so you can take these pictures yeah it's uh yeah but such such a such a really really nice build um and this is kind of the style from uh, we we featured one of Fen's builds previously and it was kind of like the same chrome super high-end kind of feel so definitely uh definitely check that one out for sure in the uh live chat we have old man he said he's just dropping in well good to see you glad to glad you could make it for this uh, i guess you would call this the second half of the podcast 
Uh, before we get to news, I did want to point out that I did post a video on our YouTube of the uh, thermal take. What is this? The thermal take uh, HG 700 TG. Um, if you guys want to check the video out and you want to see me talking about this case, uh, you can definitely go ahead and do that. It is linked in the show notes, but uh, we already reviewed this case. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. This is a $90 case that has, uh, you know, fits extended ATX motherboards, has nice side panel designs. The ones we were talking about with the door, it has that nice door design, easy to build in, has this RGB element on the front and it's only 90 bucks. So check out the video if you want to learn a little bit more about it for sure. Uh, and then we'll move on to news. So we have some more RTX 4070 stuff. Um, not sure how I feel about this story because I think this is just an old website. But uh, it looks like, uh, I think this is v Vietnamese, this right? Okay. I think. Um, on an Oris Gigabyte, uh, Gigabyte website, I believe this is Vietnamese. I could be wrong. Anyways, um, I think it's like this is like a compatibility uh, selector, right? Or is it Thai? It almost looks like Thai. Yeah, Thai. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you you're actually right. I'm I'm thinking wrong. Yes, you were right. Um, but anyways, this is like a compatibility or support thing where you drop down and you select your your card. Well, they have a bunch of 4070 models with a bunch of different uh, VRAM capacities. So all the way from 16 gigs to 12 gigs to 10 gigs. So this begs the question of, are we getting three different 4070s? Yeah, I hope not. Man, like I, I honestly don't think because this same this same website had the RTX 40 80 12 gigabyte, which is now the 4070 oh, Ti. Yeah. So I yep. think that maybe these weren't finalized yet, right? Possibly. Okay. Um, like their final whatever. Um, but <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to see that much segmentation, right? Like, what's what's your, what's the point of those increments of price? Cards? Pricing, it's pricing. I I guess, but man, like it, it just seems so. And, and we've talked about this, you know. They want it used to be like every hundred bucks was, you know, right? They want they want smaller 60, increments, I guess. Yeah, now yeah, now they wanted like every twenty to compete with AMD and now Intel. Hopefully that's not the case. We don't know. This is just what, you know, was found on this website. I would have a hard time believing that they would come out with three. I could see two, but even then it's kind of like, and, and again, like if you look at these names, right? Like, you know, how is a normal average consumer going to know what's the difference between the 4070 gaming OC and the 4070 gaming OC, like the 12 and the 16 gig. Right. How do you, how are you selling that pro the 10? Like, you're like, oh, I don't think you're a 10 gig user. You're probably a 12, but you're definitely not a 16. Like, how do you tell? Like, it's, it's so stupid. It is, but it's funny. I really don't think this is going to be it. When I saw this, I was like, this can't be true. So we'll obviously see when the card yeah. comes out. Card, card yeah, we'll supposed see. to come out in uh, April. So we'll see if that's the case uh talking about graphics cards uh what is what is the one thing you've noticed about graphics cards in the past couple of years uh they've gone up in price yeah <laughs> uh yeah so mine factory did uh, i guess correctly because i didn't did. look to see what the next story was <laughs> yeah so so mine factory they've always been uh they've we've we've featured them a lot uh they're an online retailer um yeah. they publish all their sales <clears throat> And while they're not like the biggest retailer, they're obviously not on Amazon or Newegg, it gives you a good idea of what people are buying and, and things like that. And they always put out their data. Um, and people were comparing their overall data from, you know, 2020 to 2023 and their pricing. And it looks like graphics card prices have doubled 
between 2020 and 2023 average prices. So basically, uh, people were looking at the average selling price of both okay. NVIDIA and AMD cards. So the average selling price from Mine Factory of AMD and NVIDIA cards. So from AMD, average selling price was 295.25. Now keep in mind that in that in February of 2020, they didn't have a high end segment, right? They didn't have their XTX. So so 295.25. Sure. And this is in euros, by the way, because Mine Factory is a what's dot de? That's a I don't know. But anyways, I don't know. And then uh, yeah, I think. Um, and then for the NVIDIA side of things, their their average selling price was 426.59. Okay. Um, so fast forward to now, February 2023, mm -hmm. AMD has an average selling price of around 600 euros, whereas NVIDIA now has an average selling price of 825 euros. And Gross. this does not correlate with inflation or anything like that. It, it's much higher. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying this is just because, you know, nvidia specifically nvidia is really pushing the limit as far you know moore's law is dead right so we're sure. not doing that incremental update anymore we're you know in order for them to show real per performance boost over the previous generation they need to really take things and we did see that i mean you if you look at the if you look at the newest generation. I mean, the 4090 just smokes everything in oh, the yeah. previous Absolutely. by a lot. And I think that even the like the 3070 Ti is on par with a previous highest end 3090 Ti. So we definitely took things to the next level. Um, but graphics card prices are getting, I mean, you know, $1,600 for a flagship. And even a couple years ago, we were saying that what that, you know, a thousand dollars for a flagship was a lot. Now mm. we're up to sixteen hundred. I mean, that's well, and it's funny because I just saw and I just sort looked at it now real quick. There was a video from years ago um, where Jensen, uh, the CEO of NVIDIA, was talking about how they would be able to, you know, like make so many advancements that these graphics cards will become so cheap and affordable and so powerful. And like, well, they become powerful and like do Expensive. these things but they definitely haven't become cheaper uh unfortunately so yeah well if you are looking for mm -hmm. an affordable graphics card and you happen to live by a best buy you might want to go in there and check uh to see if they have any craft 30 series graphics cards in stock because they were massively discounted um you know 3080 419 30 yeah, i saw some Two ninety nine prices, yeah. Thirty nine, thirty ninety Ti eight seventy nine, um, and a thirty eighty Ti seven nineteen. These were all on clearance. Um, a lot of them were sold out uh, very quickly because these are yeah. the lowest that these cards have ever been. But these are, I mean, we both use thirty series cards still. I still have my thirty ninety, mm -hmm. and you still have. What do you have? Or no, you're on oh. a twenty series. Oh, I'm on a twenty series. Yeah, yeah I would if I if I could have gone to a Best Buy and bought a. 3080 for 420 bucks i would have done it yeah and just used that yeah Absolutely. and these are all of course the uh, founders editions as well yeah um and they're all brand new because again you could probably pick up a you know a 3080 pretty cheap um mm -hmm. but it's probably used or was used for mining and things like that so um but yeah these were great deals if you could find them i don't know if you can anymore but everything was massively discounted this past week um I was um, on their my, site tonight and uh, yeah, they showed a bunch that were sold out like these founders edition cards, but I also noticed that they had some cards like of the current 40 series marked down like $50 and some even like a yeah. hundred dollars. So yeah, I it's, thought that was kind of interesting. It's not a bad time to, to pick up a graphics card, whether you're going super, super high end 40 series or find a, mm -hmm. you know, a new 30 series card you can definitely find uh, for sure. For sure. So we had talked about it, and I, I myself was very skeptical. You know, Intel Arc was delayed. It was delayed. It was delayed. It finally came out. Kind of underwhelming. Not a lot of people really cared. 
Uh, we've been talking about how they've been updating their drivers, getting better performance. They dropped the price down. I think if you're in that price range, you know, what is it, 249 for the for the one, it's not bad. It's something worth checking out. Um, but it looks like now uh, their second generation of the ARC graphics card architecture uh, called Battle Mage. We had talked about it. A lot of people were saying it might get canceled. Uh, there was a lot of stories saying that it was done. Uh, a lot of really compelling stories from people supposedly inside Intel saying that it was done. But it has been confirmed um, who who is a uh, rep from Intel Arc. He just did a uh, Tim Peterson or Thomas Peterson. Sorry. He just did a podcast, uh, the full nerd podcast with PC world. Uh, we have it in the article at the bottom. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, good podcast. If you're Intel, if you're into Intel arc goes over all of their changes, all of their, uh, updates for what they've done with the drivers, their performance gains, all of that kind of stuff. But he did confirm that battle battle mage. Uh, well, he first confirmed that we're going to get like an alchemist plus like a refresh of Intel arc alchemist, mm. which is currently, and then you're going to get, you know, you can see the, the roadmap here. Battle mage will be coming. It was confirmed by him. That's a good sign, right? If nobody was talking about it, it'd be like, is this all we're getting? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, we always say typically second generation is if you were really in, into a product, like when I brought, bought my drone, I was like, I'm going to wait till this matures yeah. a little bit. I didn't buy one right off the, the bat. And I think with this type of stuff, same thing, I think battle mage will kind of be the, if you were thinking about trying out Intel, I think yeah. that will be the one, the one to get. So. I usually try and wait for that second round, but man, when when the first Ryzen CPUs came out, I was like, I don't care, man. I'm I'm buying one. It would, that was yeah, but that was an exciting time for sure. Oh, everybody absolutely. was uh, everybody was uh, talking about those. So so yeah, so definitely something exciting. You won't see those till probably 2024 ish. Um, so we'll keep you updated when we hear more. But it's good to see that somebody from Intel was like confirming that it was yes. coming. Uh, moving over to the laptop side of things, uh, somebody tested the uh, GeForce RTX 4090 laptop, uh, and it beats a RTX 3090 desktop card in three wow. mark time spot. So, and again, we've talked about this on the podcast the past couple of weeks with these new RTX 4090 laptops. People are like, yeah, it's not a real 4090, and and we get that, like we we know still, and <laughs> yeah, and I, that that is just you know they're mar they're naming it that way because that's going to be the highest the highest performance you're going to get in this generation. They're not going to make anything higher than that uh, for the laptop, right? So for a laptop, the highest end laptop that I can get is just as powerful as the previous generation's highest end discrete GPU. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, yeah. Because what's it matter? Like if it's, oh, it's not the full thing. Like if you're running that to the side and you throw it up on some really nice monitors, who cares if it's in a desktop or if it's a laptop, right? Like whatever. Yeah. And I, yeah, I know it's not, the, it's not the same as the, the desktop product, but like you said, if it's doing just as good as last generation's flagship I mean, car, about it, like what you could do with a 3090 TI, I mean, you know, <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, just about, not, you know, yeah. And you're getting it in like a, a portable form and take it with you. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I think that's really cool. So good to see. And, and I think this was it yesterday, yesterday or today, all the other SKUs came out. So all okay. the other laptops came out for down the line as far as that stuff. So we, over this next week, next couple of weeks, you'll see a lot of reviews come out of these other uh, gaming laptops that weren't the super high end ones. We've seen reviews, a lot of the super high end ones, um, now you're going to see, you know, the 40, 70, 60, and 50 um, laptops. That'd be pretty cool as well. Um, the the processor that you didn't wait for was uh, tested this week. So um, next week, uh, February 28th, is when the Ryzen 7000 Series X3D parts come out. Uh, they had already been announced. Um, it looks like the Ryzen 9 7950 X3D was tested in both Geekbench and Blender. Uh, we have those results for you. 
no shocker that in both Blender and uh, Geekbench that the 7950X, the non-3D part, performed better. And that makes sense because, right. one, this chip is clock lower, and two, that this chip is made for... You're going to see the performance game gain in, in gaming. gaming. Right. It, you know, so that that's kind of where that kind of makes sense. These are the first benchmarks that we have seen of this chip, though. So it's kind of exciting. But I'm really excited to see the gaming benchmarks. Like, I want to see the exact same setup. What that improvement is, yep. Yeah, I want to see the exact same setup, the uh, 59 or 7950X versus a 7950X3D yep. head-to-head at games. And I want to see the difference. And I think... What would I think you it'll be impressive. Say, what what do you what would you say the average FPS difference like across say twenty games would be? I I I'd be real happy if it was like fifteen to twenty percent. Yeah, well, I would I would say like fifth like twelve to eighteen FPS average sure. better. Yeah, performance. Yeah. So if it's better, if it's higher than that, yeah, that'd be very impressive. I, I was thinking like twenty, but I don't know. Yeah, if you, av- too high. if you if you average out all the games, like if you get in your right. you might have some titles that yes, you, you're going to get that twenty percent. Yeah, um, and some may be as low as ten or something. So yeah, twelve to eighteen, fifteen to twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. Uh, I'm excited for that. So those come out uh, the twenty eighth. So if you were Next waiting, uh, yeah, you'll be able to uh, pick those up. We have some pretty cool storage products, uh, both that I definitely want to talk to you about. We talked about the one last week because it was. Mm-hmm. First launched with their Xeon motherboards uh, from ASRock, but now you can buy it as a standalone uh, card. This is the Blazing Quad M.2. This looks like a, uh, I would say, old school graphics card, sort of. Um, yeah. But it it does come with two fans here. Uh, but under the hood, of course, you have room for four M.2s. I like this thing, man. I just, you know, it's, yeah, it's cool. If you've got a need for that, that type of ca- storage capacity, right? Like so many of these motherboards are going to already come with two or three slots, but if you need to add in additional really fast storage, they yeah. And these are PCI express 5.0. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It comes yeah. with a six pin power connection. You, of course you put, pl- you plug this into a PCI right. Express 5.0 X16, and then these are all PCI Express 5.0 X4s. Nice. You know. Very nice. So, yeah, super, super fast uh, storage there. No word yet on pricing or anything like that. Um, as you can see, they do come with the thermal pads on the bottom. And then, of course, the top, you have the heat sink uh, in the cooling fan and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I know you're not going to see it, but, man, those fans are ugly. Yeah. They are. <laughs> they, no. I feel like they could have put some bigger fans in there, had them spin a little slower, and look better. But with some yeah, RGBs, maybe. you want you want some Who RGB am I? lighting? I don't. Yeah. No, it would look cool if they had had some RGB lighting. But, but yeah. So yeah, check that out. Uh, no word on pricing on that one. And the second one is uh, a really cool device because it. Oh wait, did I link the wrong thing? Or did I? Oh, I clicked. No, I, I didn't link the wrong thing. I clicked the wrong link. Um, so Sabarant has a new Type C docking station, but the cool thing about it is that it has the M.2, okay. which I think is really cool. So if you needed to take something from an, you know, you had an older uh, system and you wanted to keep the same OS, you could clone it to the M.2. Or Vice versa, you want or to back vice versa. Up your fast storage, throw it on a bigger drive, and then take yeah, this is yeah. cool. Yeah, super super cool. I don't think I've they've probably have been out, but I don't think we've covered them, or I don't think I've seen them uh, to have the M.2 as part of the docking station because this is the typical. We've we reviewed these years ago, the normal SATA based docking station. Um, but yeah, super easy. And I think there's just like easy cloning. Um, there's a connection here. So yeah, and you can set, you know, what you, yeah. So it, it's it's not even yeah your direction yeah yeah direction doesn't even you, require. You could just hmm. Can you power it on without even being connected to a computer? 
I believe so. Because if it's just got the clone direction switch and the clone button, you don't need yeah. to plug in that type C. You just give no, it power yeah, and power, send yeah. it on its way. Yeah, it'll be good to go. So yeah, huh. I really like that too. So it's like again, a lot of these things will require software for you to clone and do all that kind of stuff. This, you know, all you gotta do is set the direction you want the clone to go from either the SATA to the M.2 or the M.2 to the SATA. Select that over, you hit the clone button, and I'm sure it's going to uh, I, I assume that's what these this is. So it's going to be 25% done for these. You know what I mean? See those little indication LEDs for that? Yeah, I was wondering uh, what those. Yeah, so those indicate. will. Yeah, so those will go over as your clone completes. When it's at 100, it will tell you and you're good to go. And you don't even have to plug this into your PC. This is very cool. Yeah, very, very cool. So I like that. Uh, I don't know if there's, I don't think there's, uh pricing available on this soon, I think. yeah available yeah. soon but yeah cool if, if you're somebody who's in the need of this i think it's great um you know to be able to offload or onload or however you want to do it so yeah check that one out as well um and then we have a new keyboard from razor um and there's some pretty interesting things and it's kind of like ah, this looks like every razor rgb keyboard <laughs> you know people are gonna say this, this is a black widow v4 pro uh brand new uh mechanical keyboard um has the little dial or i guess you'd call it a dial a wheel roller bar roller bar uh which you can obviously configure a lot of people will just use it for volume you have your multimedia over here now the cool thing i don't know if you notice it from this picture but in the side picture, you get three little side buttons right here. Oh, all right. And you yeah. have some like G buttons as well, right? Like five. Yeah, buttons. yeah. Five, five uh, macro buttons. Yep. You obviously get the um, wrist rest, which is really, really nice. Looks really high end there. Um, RGB lighting that goes across that whole thing too. So you, obviously you got a ton of RGB lighting with this. Um, but yeah, it has the side the side buttons, which I think is pretty cool. And I think they're at a spot where like, I'm just looking at like doing that on my keyboard right here, right now. Like you can access it. Yeah. Pretty easily. Yeah. Like e even if, you, even though you're going to lift up your fingers a little bit, it's easy <laughs> to access. No. Yep. So like if you, if that was like, if you wanted to swap screens or if you're streaming that like does an action really quickly, yep. I, I really do like the side buttons there. So um, lots of cool stuff with this. You can check out, uh, we have the link, to, you know, where you can pick it up. Uh, $229.99, uh, available, yeah, since February 16th, you can pick this up. So yeah. So Those uh, buttons on the side remind me of a keyboard that I had before, my, I think it was before my G15. Oh, wow. And it, it had um, a scroll wheel to the left of the keyboard mm. and like a forward and back button there. And I actually used that quite a bit, even though I had a mouse with a scroll wheel on it. I I got used to using like that scroll wheel sometimes and the back button on it. It was really nice. Nice, but, yeah. Anyway. But I, I like to see that. I like definitely they're functional. just small. Yeah, they're small. I, like we add all these things to our keyboards and other things, but like so many of those, some sometimes it's just too much and it's not super functional. Where yeah. I feel like those three little buttons, especially with things we're doing now, like streaming, gaming, like that those make sense so I, I really like to see that so check it out like i said it is the uh black widow v4 pro um and then finally um this is something i wanted to talk to you about ryan because you were the guy testing similar things at ces um so play seat and logitech announce uh the play seat trophy logitech g edition this is this thing now when we were at CS, we you specifically played in a lot of these uh, yep. racing style seats, right? These, mm -hmm. and they were kind of these really big contraptions that cost thousands and thousands of dollars, yep. and really weren't movable. And they like took up the whole room. If you were looking for something a little bit not as not as in depth, I think this is great. This, yeah, this looks awesome. Uh, I hadn't seen this yet. And I have like that same steering wheel yeah. in my storage room. And I've only used it a handful of times because every time I've got to like, you know, either attach it to my desk right here. Well, now it's in the way of my keyboard. And yeah. if I don't want it here and I want to do it on a bigger screen out in the living room, like what's the best option to mount that? I don't have a coffee table out there to do it. Like this thing would be perfect for it. 
I, I, I really like this. Yeah, you're not all in on like one of these racing rigs that's, like you said, huge. It weighs hundreds of pounds. It takes up half your living room. Yeah, like this is something that you could like put in the corner when you're not using it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is from Placey. It's it's a combo between Placey and Logitech. You get the kind of... Uh, this actually looks like it'd be decently comfortable, too. Yep. Um, has adjustments for the where your pedals would go. And obviously, I believe you would need to buy the wheel and the pedals, I assume. Yeah. I think it's just for the frame. But I mean, it's a high... It's, a, it's not... Plan I mean, this is all metal. Um, and the seat looks really nice. And it's 600 bucks. Oh, dang. So I was, yeah. I was like, okay, I need to look into buying this, but I don't it's, know. If yeah, I'm... it's five ninety nine. Okay. Um, uh, mm. I didn't read if it comes with. No, yeah. Because they make a couple, Logitech makes a couple steering wheel pedal combos, right? They make one that's kind of more for PlayStation, then they make one that's Windows Xbox style. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so it's probably not going to come with a. Yeah, it think. looks it looks nice, but that price seems really high because, like, you think of how much a gaming chair costs. Like a an entry level gaming chair, what two fifty to three? Yeah, but there's a lot more metal here. Yeah, but like, I mean, it is expensive. Worth. And then you got the chair. Yeah, but that's just the back of a chair, and yeah. not even a full base. I don't know. I'm. I mean, it, the price isn't horrible, but it is. It is it's definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's not terrible, but I. I just think for somebody who, you know, one of those big racing rigs is a couple thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. You know if you're I mean? yeah, if, if you're a person that plays like a Forza or something like that, dirt rally, whatever, and you're playing it like all the time, th yeah, this makes sense for me. Like, if this is four hundred dollars, I'd really think about it. Yeah, um, but for someone that's really into racing games, yeah, this is probably makes sense. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you can check it out on Logitech's website. This did make me think of something. So I was like randomly on TikTok and somebody bought like from a junkyard, like a $300 car, right? Okay. And obviously the car doesn't work. You know, they just bought the car and they ripped out like the front, like the, the front part of the, like, you know, like where the, where your steering wheel is and all this stuff. And they turned it into like a, like where they would play their racing like games. A racing sim? So, yeah. So they like sit the whole, in a car? sort of yeah it's it's not that like it's just the seat and then the front so they like took the entire front part of the like the like the in the interior the front interior of the car right. out you know mm -hmm. it, it's pretty funny i'll if i find out to send it to you all right um but yeah that made me think of that so that is uh that is it for news this week as far as what's coming up next week i'm taking a look oh, i wish i had it i was actually using it in the living room today um so i'll be taking a look at the lenovo slim 7i carbon and this thing is 13 inch laptop super light it's lighter than a macbook air i believe uh 2.5k 90 hertz display on this thing uh 12th gen intel uh, core processor Really cool stuff on this one. I'm um, excited to tell you guys about that. So definitely uh, stay tuned. So for... related to that Lenovo, I had a buddy message me the other day and he said, hey, have you reviewed the Legion Pro 7i Gen 8 yet? And I was like, no, we haven't, but I'm pretty sure we saw it at CES. He had ordered one and it's like showing up. When did he say like, yeah, he's he's got one on order. So uh, that's a pretty, pretty beefy laptop that I'm, I'm pretty sure we saw at CES, uh, if I remember correctly. So. He was super excited to get that in. Yeah, yeah. No, the Lenovo Legion stuff's really good if you're a gamer, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. I will also uh, be taking a look at, you were taking a look at flash drives. I actually have one as well. So this is a Lexar Jump Drive P30, USB 3.2 Gen 1, um, 450 megabytes a second, super fast. It's almost as fast as a internal SATA-based uh, SSD. Uh, this one... Starts at 128 gigabytes, goes up to a terabyte. Wow. Uh, so, so you can transfer. And it actually has a really nice metal casing, uh, which I'll talk about next week. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that stuff uh, cool. next week. Yeah. And as we come to the end here, did we always talk about tech. We talk about if we did any tech-related things. Uh, 
you had your your things that are still behind you. Did you turn those off eventually? Oh, so I I left them on all night, and I was like, I'm just gonna leave them on and see if they still have a battery when I come down the next day. They were all dead, but they had only started at like their first battery level. So I charged them up mm, yesterday, last night, I think. And so they were fully charged and I'm going to leave them on overnight as well again, I think. And just, okay. just to see, yeah, see, see how long they last. Cause they're, you know, they're always listening, right? So how much does the always listening take compared to like their activity? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, no, I just worked on review stuff mostly um yeah just getting stuff just getting stuff done we have a lot of products into review. i have a lot of products into review um so just keeping up with that stuff it was good to do a a full length video uh we've yeah. been putting out a lot of short form content either on social media or on a youtube channel um uh, so now we have uh you know more long form stuff coming out a lot of long form stuff is going to be coming out because like i said i have a lot of stuff in here to review plus i still haven't done the video on my new desk setup um so Got to talk about that there as well. So we have a lot of stuff going on. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but since we are coming to the end here, of course, we're going to jump over to Twitch, twitch.tv uh, forward slash think computers. Ryan will have that stream up. And we're going to, is the uh, the deathmatch mode still going? Yeah, oh. I think that's like, that just replaces arenas, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. So it'll be there all the time. Yep. Nice, yep. nice. So, uh, playing Apex Legends. I haven't played since we played last week at all. Um, so maybe I won't be as rusty. I wasn't. I wasn't having the best time last last week, so <laughs> I wasn't feeling it. So we'll play tonight. I'm definitely excited to play. Uh, it's been a it's been a semi stressful week for me. So yeah, let's let off some steam. Play some uh, Apex Legends. So again, we will be, we will uh, be over there. Twitch TV uh, for touching computers. And uh, yeah, that is it. Thanks everybody. Who was in the live chat, old man? Good to see you there, of course, as well, and everybody else. And we'll see everybody 